few days ago I recorded a video about trolls which I finished editing and uploaded this morning. Um, I had a couple of hours to kill and I had my notebook um, which happened to have um, some of the notes which I'd scribbled down in 2008 and 2009 um, and I was reading them and uh, I thought it was semi-interesting so I decided to record um, what I wrote at that time and then just as an experiment decided to upload what I recorded as YouTube videos and um, a few people seem to quite like what I had to say. Um, so now I'm going to read a few extracts from this other blue book um, which I wrote in uh, 90... It actually starts in 93. 93, 94, 95, 96. Um, I'm just going to read a few little bits here and there. Um, there's a lot of really embarrassing stuff. Um, I used to be very ignorant and deluded and uh, came up with a lot of arguments which I see other people using in videos and comments. Um, I used to be like that, as you will see. Right, just jump straight into it. Wednesday the 5th of July 1995. Now I have been away from school for two years, one-tenth part of my life. It has had its good points, but I can see that school was not half as bad as I thought it was at the time. Last night, appropriately, I hired the film Born on the 4th of July with Tom Cruise. This is back in the days of video cassettes. Very good, quite shocking in fact, and confirmed my beliefs even stronger that most people in power, be it government or managers or managers of or in companies, are corrupt. Everyone does favours for those they like or better those who can help them financially. They shit on people who don't matter and they couldn't care less. It really is true. Or so I thought at the time. 6th of September 1995 I am now lying in bed at the B&B &B in Smithton near Inverness. I have worked for the Forestry Commission for three days. What an eye-opener. Whenever the weather is wet, brackets most of the time, nobody does any work. On Tuesday we achieved bugger all. On Tuesday we achieved bugger all. Today we demolished and burned a wooden shed which was fun in an anarchistic, destructive kind of a way. 8th of September 1995. This, I, I may as well explain, um, I worked in Inverness for the Forestry Commission for just under a year as a pre-college work placement. Um, and I was sent out with uh, various different people within the organisation. Um, so this is a few things from just after I started. Um, the next bit I'm going to read from the 8th of September. I have got names in here and because this is such a long time ago and I haven't be kept in touch with any of these people, um, I'll just read it exactly as I wrote it. Harry Stewart and myself fixed a fence which had been up... I can't read. Harry Stewart and I fixed a fence which had been uprooted by several trees as they blew over in the wind. It was a job and finish, meaning that we could unofficially go home early. The rain was drizzling, which made working in waterproofs hot and sticky. It took about an hour at a leisurely pace. If I condensed all the work I've done in, done this week, it would probably be done in less than an eight-hour shift. Harry was saying that the morale of the workers is at rock bottom. No one is sure how much longer they will be in work. Even as we were talking, they were announcing more redundancies on the radio. That sounds strangely familiar. Right. Let's jump forward to the 24th of September, 1995. Autumn is starting now. There is a constant fallout of yellow leaves, even though the trees are still mostly green. The rain is pissing down outside. 
Last Wednesday I was working with Small John. He took me to see a harvester in action near Daviot, a few miles south of Inverness. It looked similar to a digger on caterpillar tracks. An arm reached out, grabbed a tree, pulled it upwards, and a pivoting chainsaw cut the bull very close to the ground. Still holding on, the tree fell onto its side. The trunk was drawn through the head of the arm, any branches falling away as sharp blades sliced through them. In this fashion the trunk was cut into six foot lengths, the whole process taking under a minute, and so on, on to the next tree. The operator was leaving the odds birch and Scots pine standing. We also drove through various forests through Scots pine, lodgepole pine, larch, noble fir, birch, beech, sitka spruce and alder mainly. I get the impression that some departments of the Forest Commission do run efficiently. Right. There's a lot of stuff I have to skip over here. It is really personal, cringeworthy, depressing stuff. Um, Thursday the 28th of September. A little more work was done today. Stuart was with... Stuart was with us. I can barely remember some of these people. Some of the plants were barely two inches tall, others nearly a foot. Mostly Scots pine and Sitka spruce. While it rained, we sat in the van drinking coffee, eating and discussing government cover-ups, war and corruption. Very interesting. Harry is interested in history. He knows a hell of a lot and has, and has traced his father's family's tree back to about 1830. I would like to do something like that too. Um, all these years later, it's still on a back burner. I would like to trace my family tree one day, but... Uh, it is actually something my own dad is doing, but um, not something I've been involved with. Right, 30th of September, 1995, Saturday. I'm beginning to find out the truth of what you could call the meaning of life. I have so far reached several conclusions, all based on my life experience up to this point. I also have several ideas of how to begin to save the world and the human race from the mess it is in at the moment. Consider this. Most of the problems on our little planet are caused by man, except why do we kill animals for food? In my mind it is bad to kill anything living, but some animals kill other animals. Is it therefore bad to kill plants? Perhaps some evil is necessary for us to exist, but I must try to find out if that is so. I keep stumbling across barriers in my thinking process. I must still be too young to fully comprehend the truth. Seems a strange thing to come up with, but that's what was going on in my head in uh, September 95. Tuesday, the 3rd of October 1995. The O.J. Simpson trial will come to a conclusion today when the verdict will be announced at 6 o'clock. Will he be found guilty or be set, th set free? Nordberg. But more interesting was Mr. Tony Blair's speech, snippets of which I heard on the radio. I agree with most of what he said, and if it, it, if it all comes to pass, then Britain will be the finest place to be in a few years. We shall see. Yeah, we did see, didn't we? As I've mentioned before, Harry knows a hell of a lot about history and current affairs. We were debating the subjects of war, government disruption, I think I probably meant corruption there. And wondering why two political parties never admit that the other one can have a good idea. And then the 7th of October 1995, Saturday. Is that right? That's what it says. O.J. Simpson was found to be not guilty of murdering his wife and her friend. It was announced on Tuesday. Other news includes a highly successful Labour Party conference held in Brighton last week. Much of what was said made sense to me, although they hardly mentioned any environmental issues. Next week, the Conservatives will be holding a conference in Blackpool. I wonder what, we, what they will have to say for themselves. This country is in a right bloody mess. The Tories will say that the benefits of all their arting around will soon become apparent and that Labour's policies will result in disaster. I would vote for a truth party if there was one. 
If the population were aware of what went on under their noses and around them, and were able to think for themselves, the human race would have a better chance of progressing. V very simple-minded thoughts going on there, I think. What has the human race, or at least the European... Does that even make sense? What have the human race, or at least the Europeans, achieved since the Industrial Revolution? We have increased our numbers, developed medicine for improved health, advanced technology and labour-saving equipment at an increasingly speedier pace. All very well, but we are changing the environment to suit our comfort and slowly destroying nature and cutting off our oxygen supply, the rainforests. Pardon me. We have eliminated most of our predators, bar the tiger and the crocodile. In short, if we continue to blunder on in the same way, especially with idiots sitting on the triggers of nuclear weapons, we will be the cause of our own extinction. The larger the nuclear war, the smaller the chance of human survivors. Unless, of course, governments have lied about the existence of nuclear weapons in a bid to frighten the public. I don't think that it is so, but the new French president, Chirac, has been testing huge nuclear bombs despite much protest in the South Pacific. What a shitter! Now I realise that now I realise what was meant by the t-shirts that the man in Stockholm was selling during the water festival. And I've got a little cartoon there of a fuck Chirac t-shirt. Um, the previous summer I was uh, visiting a friend in Stockholm and um, like I said, there was a guy selling t-shirts that had fuck Chirac on them, and I had no idea what that meant at the time. So, the penny dropped. This particular day I wrote pages and pages and pages and pages. So, and this is me missing out stuff. So, jumping on a little bit, tried to find Hypatia book, which my uncle just say my uncle rather than his name, recommended, but I can't find the note which he gave me. And then I put a little note, which probably was sometime after. She was a Greek philosopheress, sadly killed in her prime by numpties. I do remember hearing a little bit more about Hypatia on Cosmos from Carl Sagan. Um, still don't know that much about her, apart from the unusual fact that she was a female philosopher. Anyway, back to the stuff I was writing. I have a few burning questions in my mind. I think that one reason why we are here now is to try to sort out the mess that we are in. I feel that it is my duty to plant as many trees as I can. Perhaps I can help nature to replenish some of the oxygen I burned when I had the car. At this particular point in time, I didn't have a car. Just a bicycle. If I can persuade people to think of the consequences of their actions and infuse a desire in them to protect the earth, then, as well as the trees, I shall die having done more good than bad. Tricky situation. How can you convert a selfish person who couldn't care less if his grandchildren die from air pollution and radioactive fallout to a responsible and caring individual? It's still an interesting question. To which I don't have the answer. Yet. If possible, I'd like to join the Green Party or Greenpeace. My brain is full of world-saving ideas. By the time I die, some of my trees should be around a hundred feet tall. That is, assuming I don't pass on prematurely. What I hope is that after I've snuffed it, the forests will be passed into good hands, i.e. kept away from destructive, money-hungry business entrepreneurs. Very strange stuff. Um, if there is an afterlife, it would be nice to look down and see good which is being continued. What I am writing makes perfect sense in my mind, but my ability to convert thoughts to words is not so hot today. Am I philosophizing? Question mark. Do I even have a small grasp of what Steiner, Goethe, Einstein or Socrates were Socrates were thinking of. 
so far I have noticed that many people talk about doing good, but very few actually do anything about it. I'd like to change that. My career, so to speak, is currently on a back burner, although I must not lose sight of its importance, because without money I cannot shovel food into my body to keep it alive. Harry, this is my colleague at the time, says that the older he is getting, the more he is leaning towards atheism. I don't believe that our lives and consciousness are a result of physical evolution from dust to what we are now. How can you jump from an inanimate object to something which is living, like a piece of algae which can re replenish itself? Back in 1995 I had very little idea about natural selection and survival of the fittest. If somebody had told me, um, just think about dog breeding, I could have probably put the pieces together. You know, in essentially I had the basics, I had the knowledge of how evolution worked, but uh, didn't. I wasn't able to connect the pieces together. And in the book, I digress. Nothing new there. Now answer this. Why is the universe in existence? And how came it to be? We can think, but it is hard to contemplate an empty world devoid of substance and life. Black emptiness and non-existence. What happens to our minds when we sleep but don't dream? Our minds somehow switch off or partially dies. Is that what happens when we kick the bucket, or does our consciousness continue? Does any human being alive on the earth today know the answer to this? The truth. Lead me to that person. I am hungry for the truth. My uncle has told me that Steiner, in brackets the greatest philosopher, knows all of these answers knew them, but has left many books covering these subjects. To use a Stephen King-ism, my real life has begun aged 20. I can only find out more, and if I forget, this book should remind me. If I didn't have this hat on, I'd be doing a bit of face palming right now. I'm still on the same day, and I'm skipping forward about four pages here. So far, I haven't come across anyone who is telepathic. Harry is right in saying that everyone is equal. Their souls, when they are born, can go either down the path of good or evil. There is also the possibility to transgress from one to the other. Transgress? I don't think that's the right word. Take Oscar Schindler as an example. He created good from an evil situation, and when the war was over, he cried and said he could have done more. I think that... I was taking that from the film, which isn't necessarily isn't necessarily exactly what happened at the time. I see stuff here and I, d I can't even start reading it because it just doesn't make sense grammatically. Right. Is there anything in religion? Apparently a much hushed up discovery was made in the Middle East recently. Some ancient records were uncovered which told of a messiah coming down from heaven, sent by God. In short, the same story as told by the Bible, only this occurred several thousand years before the Christian story. The implication being that the Christian religion was copied. I don't know what to believe, but I am pursuing the truth with an open mind. I only hope that my mind's eye can open wide enough. Another facepalm moment there. I presume what I was writing about there was somebody must have told me about the Dead Sea Scrolls, but it's a long time ago, I can't remember exactly, so I'm just reading what I wrote. Um, this next bit is embarrassing, but I'm going to read it anyway, sod it. As I watched Oscar the hamster running back and forth on the desk in front of me, at that time I was looking after a hamster that belonged to a friend of mine who moved out of the country. So, living in a bed sits with a pet hamster. Back to the book. I now know that there is more intelligent life than man. Not think, but know. The reason being that nothing on earth is self-creative. 
Self-destructive, yes, but not self-creative. That is impossible, so therefore life on earth must have been created by some very wise creator. God, if you believe the Christian religion, Muhammad, Allah, G Odin, or Zeus. The ability to create life must require an intelligence far greater than we humble Homo sapiens could ever muster, although we try. Consider the tree. These trees... Hang on, I need to go back. My writing is terrible. Consider the tree. There are four small ones on my desk in front of me, not mine, but under my care. These trees have the ability to transform water, minerals and light energy into living wood and green leaves. Something I learned later on was called photosynthesis. We absorb... We absorb food and drink. Without thinking, we digest and extract the goodness, and this replenishes our bodies. We have amazingly intelligent abilities, but our conscious thinking process does not know how we do this. It just happens. Conventional scientists cannot possibly explain the reason why. Um, I'm nearly done now, I think. Just going to read another paragraph. So what is intelligence? Surely it is not intelligent to destroy one's own living environment. Therefore a mouse has more intelligence than us. Left alone it will continue to exist in the same way for thousands of years, continually fighting for survival. Humans are constantly progressing, not necessarily for the better. Right. Strange trip down memory lane for me. I haven't really looked at this stuff for a while, so um, I'll find some more stuff from later on that is semi-appropriate and hopefully semi-interesting, and uh, make another video soon. Cheers.